What's up guys, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. So, two weeks away from graduating Spine Fellowship and over the last 11 years of training, you know, I've managed to you know, keep a very busy schedule as well as do things that I like. And I get a lot of questions from people that are asking, how do you do all of this? How do you do YouTube, be a father, you know, uh, do research, travel, do surgery, you know, what, what's your secret? And over the last 11 years, I did a one year post back program before med school, four years of uh, med school, five years of surgical residency, and then a one year fellowship. So, you know, and when people ask me that question, my first response is, hey, I, I don't have the the uh, you know the, the answer to that I haven't figured it out yet but I've learned a few things over the last 11 years that I would like to share with you guys and I'm gonna share with you uh, today in this video so when you start your medical career you start in medical school um, it's gonna be a huge you know adjustment from college just because of the amount of work that uh, that is required of you and in medical school, you're gonna feel overwhelmed. You're gonna feel like you don't have time to do anything. And that's exactly what happened to me because I didn't know how to manage my time. And over the years, I've constantly tweaked different adjustments. I didn't. I made small adjustments to the things that I think are important to manage my time and be effective with my time. My first year of medical school, I gained about 25, 30 pounds from eating, you know, not healthy, not working out, not taking care of myself, stress, and, um, you know, that those things are really not good, and that leads to a lot of burnout, a lot of, uh, you know, stress, unnecessary stress, you know, along this path. This path is already stressful enough. You don't need those other things in your life that are going to add to that. So the first tip that I have for you guys is to stay organized. And this may sound like it's um, you know easier said than done, but whether this is kind of writing things out that you need to accomplish or using some type of app or something on your laptop, a Google Calendar, you have to stay organized just because there are gonna be things that are gonna be piling up, there are gonna be assignments that are due, patients that you have to see, meetings that you have to attend, you know, various things that you need to get done and you have to stay organized. So whatever it takes, try to stay organized. The second tip that I have for you guys is to set agendas and set timed agendas. So whenever I have a list of tasks to complete, I need to round at the hospital I need to do research. I need to read this chapter uh, tonight. I need to do these questions tonight. I always list out everything that I need to accomplish that particular day. And sometimes I do this for the week. So what I usually do from seven to eight a.m. I'm going to, I'm going to round at the hospital. And then once I'm done, I cross it out. Crossing it out gives me that sense of accomplishment. And it makes me feel really good that I completed something not just going through my day and man, I got this to do, I got that to do, I need to go run across town and go um, do this particular thing. So even if I had already completed that task, say for instance, I was supposed to go to the gym today or meet with one of my study partners, I will even write that out, even though I completed it earlier that morning and then add it to my list, write it out and then cross it out right away. That just, for me, it's psychological. It l lets me know that um, I am making progress and that's what it's all about. So from seven to 8 a.m. going to round at the hospital. From eight to nine, I'm gonna stop at the library and do some questions. From nine to 10, I'm going to have lunch with a friend. From 10 to 11, I have a class meeting that I need, need to go to. From 12 to one, I'm going to take a nap and so on so that your day is completely full and you know exactly for the entire day what you need to accomplish and what you need to be doing so by the end of the day you know exactly what you needed to accomplish and what you actually accomplish and 
at the end of the day you see your list and you see that you have crossed off everything that you needed to get done well that you know that's a very satisfying day and you can go to sleep a little less uh, stressful so make an agenda for the day if you can't do it for the entire week before you start your day write things out that you need to accomplish at the end of the day everything on that list before you go to sleep should be checked off and you have time allocations in your particular day so you don't go over so by let's say 9 to 10 that you're supposed to be doing questions in the library by 10.05 you should not be in the library still doing questions just because the rest of your day is going to uh, be thrown off if you don't stay on track and there's always something that happens unexpected life events come up you have to throw some buffers 30 minute windows within your schedule to give you time like you get a flat tire or, or you know you had to wait in line to get some gas or the grocery store you know life happens and you schedule these things out uh, throughout uh, your day the next thing that's important is to schedule self care S schedule time for yourself when I gained those 25, 30 pounds my first year in med school, I wasn't taking care of myself. And you can put in all the time, all the effort, all these years of training, and if you're not taking care of yourself and your health, you're not gonna be around to take care of others and to, and to take care of patients. So most important is to take care of yourself. And that's one thing that I learned over the years, even though I'm extremely busy I always try to at least three to four times per week add in you know 30 minutes to an hour of a workout and it may not be that same workout where I'm going to the gym just sitting around kind of lollygagging talking to a few people no it's very efficient workouts I get in do 20 minutes of cardio 30 minutes of a, a quick weight workout and I get out so you just have to be very efficient with your time you know that next hour another one of your tasks is going to uh, need to be done. So schedule self-care within your day, whether this is going for a walk, doing some yoga, hanging out with a friend, watching a movie, um, you, you need to schedule those things uh, within your day. Another tip for you guys when you're scheduling your day, making your agendas and writing things out, is to knock out the small tasks first. That's another thing that I use, another psychological thing that um, if I had to, let's say, write a 100 word essay for one of my classes versus, you know, writing a personal statement for fellowship or to start on it, I figure that 100 word essay, I could just knock that out really quickly. And at the end of that essay, mark it off in my list that, you know, that, that was a real satisfying kind of mark off just because um, I completed something that needed to be done. So I always try to make a list and figure out what needs to be done, what's most important, what's most pressing. If you have a test that's coming up three weeks from now versus a essay that needs to be done next week, that short essay, go ahead and knock it out, get it out of the way, and then mark it off your list. So. Complete small tasks first, save the larger tasks for other times, and then you can break up those larger tasks into smaller ones on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That way you're not working on that large task all at one time on one particular day. Another thing that I found to be helpful is to outsource things if you can. You know, as medical students, pre-med students, Everyone's kind of strapped on money, you know, money's tight, but um, you know, time is also money as well. So there's certain things that you like to do. Me, videography, make videos, you know, uh, go, you know, fitness or health related things. Um, try to outsource as much as you can. And that's one thing that I had a hard time giving up things that I enjoyed doing that just took a lot of time, like video editing or you know, uh, graphic design or various things with my research, you know, find ways to outsource uh, certain things. And whether this is having your friend, you know, look over your personal statements or, you know, 
having someone write out your note cards for you and, and in exchange for studying with that person. I don't know, just find ways that, um, you know, you can limit the amount of time that you're spending on certain activities and certain things like I used to write out everything in medical school and that took a lot of time. So what I used to do is to, I bought the medical school notes. We had a note taking service uh, with our medical school. So I just bought those notes and went over those notes and that saved me a lot of time, a lot of hours. So that was my way of kind of outsourcing certain things that were taking up a large percentage of my time. So the next tip I have for you guys is to stay disciplined. You know, we go through this whole path, you know, I just mentioned that um, I've been along this path, been on this path for the last 11 years, and it's easy to lose hope. It's easy to kind of lose track of your what, what your goal is. And there's certain things that will pull you off to the side and you may get distracted or you may lose a little bit of motivation, but you know, you have to stay disciplined. And you know, my time in the military afforded me the opportunity to learn how to be very disciplined in my studies. And I think that's what essentially set me up for success in medical school, in residency, and now even in fellowship, you know, being disciplined, um, you know, sticking to your schedule, making sure that, uh, you know, the work that you need to get done gets done before you know you finish your day and um, you, you have to stay disciplined along this path and the last tip I have for you guys is, is for the people out there that have families uh, people out there that have kids and you know I really respect and have a lot of admiration for the people that were went through medical school and have to go home and, you know, take care of their kids. That's a um, very challenging uh, feat to uh, overcome just because in medical school, what I used to do is go straight home and study for 12 hours and didn't have to worry about a crying child or changing a diaper or feeding, you know, a, a kid or, you know, entertaining your wife. Uh, you have to uh, figure out other ways to study. So, you know, one thing that I've learned over the years is to, before I go home for the day, say for instance, I'm about to leave work and it's 6, 6 p.m., I will stick around for another, let's say two hours at work and complete my work for the next day or review my, my notes, my surgical notes, look at my anatomy, make sure that um, I know what I'm doing the next day or any research projects that need to be done. That way, when you get home, you don't feel pressured to uh, jump on your computer or get on the phone or, you know, look at those surgical notes or prepare for that test. So try to accomplish everything that you need to do before you go home so that when you go home, you can give your family, your children, your wife, your significant other, uh, you know, that undivided attention. And it took me a long time to do this. So the first hour when I get home it's from it's family time you know it's no phone calls it's no um, looking on the internet it's no reviewing any notes you know it's my family and they, they get that you know that attention that they deserve because they haven't seen me all day so these are my tips for you guys you know this is what I have used in my very busy schedule over the last 11 years in becoming a surgeon to be successful you know you have to stay organized you have to set an agenda. You have to write things out that you need to accomplish. You have to incorporate self-care. You have to be very disciplined and you have to make time for not only yourself, but also your family, your children, or your significant other. What are some ways that you guys have found uh, to manage your, your busy time as professionals? Leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.